Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. That line of severe storms that roll through our area has moved out. That's the good news. But now we're getting a sense of the damage the storms caused in places like Ferndale, where chunks of a rooftop were ripped from an apartment building. Well, the warnings have now expired, so the cleanup begins. That's right, and we've got some power outages as well. Crews are out right now working to restore power in places like Inkster. Currently, there are more than 16,000 DTE customers without electricity due to those storms that brought high winds and lightning. Let's get to Kim Adams now for the latest on our weather. Kim. Well, these storms came in very quickly this afternoon and moved out just as fast. Right now, it is mostly cloudy downtown. Temps are in the low 60s. We were in the mid-70s in some spots this afternoon. So a quick cool down behind this cold front. 62 in Howell, 60 in Pontiac, mid-60s in Adrian. We are done with the severe weather, but not quite done with the rain. In fact, there are a few showers in Wayne County that we need to take a look at here. Just to the east of the airport, west of Taylor, there's a couple of showers there. And then as we go into the Down River area, a few sprinkles or light rain showers in Southgate, Lincoln Park, Melvindale, sprinkles in Dearborn, and a little bit of a light rain in downtown Detroit and up into Indian Village. So we are not quite done with all the rain, but the threat for severe weather, if I step back a bit, you can see all that severe Severe weather is now off to our east, and we are no longer concerned about any of the thunderstorms. So if you have things you need to do outside tonight or uh, things that you can do outside, it's still going to be a little damp, but the threat for severe weather is over central Ohio up to Cleveland still getting those storms. As we zoom in a bit closer, though, temperatures have definitely dropped. We're in the low 60s, even into the upper 50s, up into the thumb. We do have a chance for showers tomorrow night and maybe a thunderstorm. We'll talk about that coming up. Okay, Kim, and some of the worst storm damage we've seen so far is in Ferndale. Yeah, Jacqueline Francis is live there now to give us a closer look at the damage. Hey there, Jacqueline. Hey guys, look at this. This apartment complex had some serious roof damage there. It looks like a tarp is hanging off the side of the building, but that appears to be part of the roof. We had a chance to catch up with the executive director of that building just a few moments ago. Here's what she had to say. No, everyone has not been evacuated yet. We're working on uh, possibly putting them up in hotels if we have to. Uh, most of the units still have electricity, but over here you see this apartment 508 on down. These people will have to be evacuated. We did have one person that was injured, and I don't know her status right now, but uh, she was taken by ambulance to hospital. I don't know what happened. At around 4 o'clock, something hit this building, knocked the roof. This tarp that you see hanging down or whatever that is, the roofers were out within 45 minutes. So we'll see what happens. I got a phone call around 4 o'clock this afternoon that said um, the roof fell off and it's blowing down 9 Mile. So. We... We now want to show you the other side of Nine Mile here. It looks like a straight line cut across the road. Now look at that utility pole just chopped in half. Debris everywhere. This part of the area has been taped off. Some businesses without power right now. So cleanup is just starting to get underway here in Ferndale. We'll continue to bring you an update tonight at 11 on Local 4. Reporting live in Ferndale, Jacqueline Francis, back to you. A lot of damage in a short amount of time. Okay, Jacqueline, we appreciate it. Well, a disturbing incident inside a Home Depot store in Macomb County has led to criminal charges as police work to find out if there are more victims. Investigators say Elijah Lawrence followed an 11-year-old girl into a women's bathroom and inappropriately touched her as she tried to get away from him. It happened at Home Depot on Hoover, north of 10 Mile in Warren. Pamela Osborne joins us live after speaking with the lead detective on this case. Pamela. <clears throat> Kimberly and Demond, they say that 11 year old girl at the center of all of this acted with courage and because she did they were able to quickly find this guy and arrest him but as you mentioned they worry there could potentially be more children out there who have come into contact with this guy take a look this is elijah lawrence the man who warned police say followed an 11 year old girl and her sister into a woman's bathroom at the home depot on hoover road sunday when the girls realized a grown man had followed the men, they tried to leave. Police say Lawrence followed close behind, and that's when he touched the 11-year-old girl. The young lady in this case did an excellent job reporting this to her mother immediately. Mom told store staff what had happened. Employees found Lawrence, who was still in the store, and 
followed him as they called 911. Detective John Tallow says Lawrence stole a bike and got away, but not for long. He was able to flee from the officers um, in the neighborhood. And within 24 hours, through law enforcement techniques, we were able to identify him and take him into custody. Police identified and arrested Lawrence at home, where they say they found evidence crucial to the investigation. The 22-year-old has been charged with criminal sexual conduct, possession of child sexually abusive material, and larceny. They suspect Sunday's incident may not have been the first. And that's what we want the public to know, is that uh, to talk to your children, um, let them know to always be alert. If something like this happens, speak out immediately. Um, that way we can, we can try to assist. And if Lawrence looks at all familiar to you or any of your children after maybe having this conversation with them, police want to hear from you. The number to call is at the bottom of your screen there. As for Lawrence, he has pleaded not guilty and is due back in court next month. Reporting live in Warren, I'm Pamela Osborne, Local 4. Okay, Pamela, we appreciate it. So as the school year winds down, some students come down with cases of senioritis. It's one way to add some excitement to the final weeks of high school is with squirt guns. Now they're playing a game called Water Wars, and it's more popular and lucrative than ever right now. Local force Rod Maloney is live tonight in Bloomfield Township. That's one of the communities where police are pretty concerned about this trend. Hey, Rod. Uh, you know, they are, Damon. And here's the thing, you know, here's how it works. They throw 25 bucks in the pot, take five of their best buddies, and they go out and they try and compete with other teams and squirt them when they're not suspecting it or when they least suspect it. And that's how you eliminate the other teams. You can win up to $1,000. But here's the thing. The kids start running around shooting squirt guns, like, say, at a local Target. And now you're talking the police getting involved. What if you saw a guy wearing one of these, a sniper ghillie suit, crawling around in your shrubbery while you were out walking the dog in the morning or around dusk? Well, it happened this week in Bloomfield Township, and while the teen ran away, police officer Nick Soley says it could have turned dangerous quickly. We've been out, we've been warning our community about these high-end you know, break-ins and home invasions within Oakland County and telling our neighbors and our community, if you see something suspicious, call us. And, uh, you know, we've got kids in full ghillie suit that are sneaking around neighbor's property and things like that. And these games are quite sophisticated. They have rules like you can't go after the competition on school grounds. You can only use water. You can't break the law or shoot out of a moving vehicle. And you're out if you have a run-in with the cops. And over the years, we've seen incidents where teens have come close to injury. We just want them to be smart and see how they may be perceived by someone who doesn't know what they're doing. And let's face it, it's sort of like the legendary t-shirt here. It's all fun and games until someone gets hurt. So our only concern is the safety of these students, right? They're out there having fun. They're playing this game. We don't have a problem with that. We want them to have fun, but we want them to do it responsibly. Now, these are not your father's squirt guns. This thing's actually <laughs> battery powered. I'm sure my photographer, he gave me permission, by the way. Uh, but here is the thing. The cops are saying, you know, don't do it at the school. The schools are saying, don't do it at the school. The kids apparently are following that rule, but they're all around town running around, and it's kind of unnerving for a lot of people. Back to you. <laughs> Rod, I hope there was some glass separating you and that camera. But look, <laughs> do police have any advice for these teens? <laughs> do the police have any advice for these teens if they well, do encounter officers? Well, that's the thing. The, the calls are coming into the police department. The police aren't looking to arrest anybody, but what they're saying is, look, if the cops stop you, or at least come around, like the guy in that ghillie suit, don't run away, because that's when problems start. Mm -hmm. You get caught, you're out of the game, have a nice day. Back to you. Good advice. All right. Thanks, Rod. <laughs> Well, two bills that would make Michigan schools more prepared to handle a cardiac arrest went before Michigan Senate's Health Policy Committee today. And there was a strong show of support during the testimony. I'm Dr. Frank McGeorge is here to explain why this legislation is so important. And you brought a prop here, too. That's great. That's exactly right. So, you know, Kim and Demond, AEDs like this one are currently in some schools in Michigan, but not all. And some athletic coaches are trained in how to use them, but not all. These bills would ensure that all K-12 schools are ready to respond to a cardiac arrest. When we think about school safety, our minds go to shooters, uh, trauma. But if we're really about school safety, we would do this as well. Sudden cardiac arrest is the leading cause of death in young athletes, but AEDs can make all the difference. We lost a student at my high school, uh, a tennis player, 
who collapsed. Uh, there was no AED present. I mean, obviously, this was years ago. Uh, and, uh, you know, I often wonder now, with the technology we have available, would his life have been saved if that were to be there? In schools with AEDs, approximately 70% of children survive cardiac arrest, seven times more than the overall average. Alex Bowerson is living proof. He suffered a cardiac arrest during wrestling practice and was saved by his high school's cheerleading coach. I was shocked by an AED and it was the only reason I'm here today. Right now, there's a kid playing sports and this kid's going to find themselves in a cardiac emergency at some point. And it is up to this bill or not whether that kid's going to have the opportunity I did where they're going to have access to an AED, where there's going to be someone who knows how to use it, and if their life is going to be saved. Passing these bills, also a goal of the NFL, citing the rescue of DeMar Hamlin. If adopted, these core elements will save the lives of student athletes and others who may one day experience sudden cardiac arrest far from an NFL stadium or the glare of television cameras. Now, the bills originally only included public schools, but they were amended to actually include private schools as well. Now, the Health Policy Committee voted to report the bills favorably to the full Senate for a vote, and that could happen sometime next week, and we will keep you posted on the progress of those bills. Mm -hmm. So, Doc, you were also saying that maintenance of all the schools' AEDs would be required, too. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's really important. I mean, you know, I've said it many times. It's not enough to just put one of these on the wall and just forget about it. In fact, Alex testified that the AED that saved him actually had an expired battery that only had one charge left on it oh, wow. and chest pads that had actually been recalled. So it's important to keep these maintained and schools need to have a plan in place for proper regular maintenance training and drills on how to use these sure. and find them quickly. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Dr. McGeorge. Mm -hmm. Mayor Mike Duggan will give his 11th State of the City address tonight. This year's theme is every neighborhood has a future. Mayor Duggan will deliver his address at Dexter Avenue Baptist Church in Detroit. It starts at 7 p.m. We'll be streaming the entire address on Local 4 Plus and click on Detroit.com. Our coverage will preempt Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy on Local 4, but they will be shown over on MeTV in their normal time slots at 7 and 730.